For most people who don't work in Hollywood and know very little about the inside workings of Hollywood, this has come as an enormous shock. I mean, this is 2017, and the thought that this kind of behaviour is as rampant as it clearly is over there um, is a genuine setback. I mean, I thought we'd, we'd grown up. I thought that that kind of misogyny was uh, locked in the past. Did you really? We yeah. have Donald Trump in the White House. <laughs> about a, a, over a dozen women accused him of sexual assault, and he, he is our president. So. I'm shocked that you thought misogyny was a thing of the past. Well, to the extent that it's, it's being uncovered now, yes. I mean, I honestly thought that the likes of Harvey Weinstein uh, were dinosaurs. They were gone. Really? Mm. That's fascinating. I, um, I live and I work in Los Angeles and in Hollywood, and this is the town where, you know, Marilyn Monroe was created. This is the town where... Uh, Judy Garland was given diet pills as a teenager, which she became addicted to and spent the rest of her life addicted to. We have a long history, a sordid history of this kind of thing, and uh, it's never gone anywhere. And it's sort of thrilling at this moment that these very powerful actresses have all come out and said, me too, particularly about Harvey. They feel safe to do it because because the New York Times broke the piece and so many women were speaking simultaneously that everyone suddenly felt like they could say, me too. And then the world wants to come out and point fingers at these actresses and accuse them of being the problem because they didn't speak out sooner, which is misogyny at work, because it overlooks what these women had to survive in order to get that power that they have, that they are now using to raise their voices as one and say, enough. Yeah. And, and, you know, as you say, you know, some people will be surprised by it, others not so surprised. It's always been referred to jokingly as Hollywood's casting couch. It's, you know, finally, it's been revealed it is no joke. There's nothing funny <laughs> about this. Uh, it has a very damaging effect uh, on, on some women. Um, you know, on yes. anybody, frankly, who's had to go through this. Um, I, it's, it, and what I... Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, you know, the hashtag Me Too uh, has mm -hmm. given women strength. Do you, do you feel compelled to talk about your own experience as well as, as, as part of that speaking out? Well... I did. I did in this article that I wrote for The Hollywood Reporter talk about some of my own experiences, and I refer to them as minutia. And the reason that I did that is because I don't have a female a colleague in this town who doesn't have stories like mine. Mm -hmm. And that's what has been so fascinating to me about this Harvey Weinstein situation. What I talk about is that I know for a fact that I would have worked with Harvey. I've never met Harvey. I've never worked with him. But I made a short film a year ago, and I was uh, about a month ago approached by a film festival that Harvey sponsors. And they asked me to submit my film to their festival, and I did it without thinking twice. And I am a dyed-in-the-wool feminist, and I am an activist, and I am vocal. And why didn't I think twice about working with this man who I know because I personally know actresses who've been propositioned by him. I did not know he was a rapist. I did know that he had a long history of inviting actresses to hotel rooms and offering them careers in exchange for sexual favors. And I do believe that is its own kind of rape. So why didn't I think twice about the idea of working with him. And that had me really looking in the mirror and really talking to my most liberal friends and saying, why were we all so willing to work with him? And the conclusion that I drew is that if I didn't work with people whose behavior I find reprehensible, I would not ever have had a career in this town. I am so inured to this kind of behavior because I've been through it. I, uh, I told a story about the first time I interviewed for a, a job as a writer. I was 28 years old and I was wearing a little dress I had bought at Old Navy and I was so excited and naive and happy to have been in the room. I'd been working on my scripts so hard for so many years and that meeting is so hard to get. And the male showrunner looked me up and down for a long minute and uh, then he turned to me and he said, I liked your script. Did someone help you write it? <laughs> Which is not a question he ever would have asked of a man. And you, you, wanna, you wanna punch him in the face. You wanna scream, you wanna call your agent and say, this guy's a pig and I'm not gonna work for him. But you don't do that because the whole town is built that way. I also told the story that my second year as a writer, I was standing in front of a writer's room. There were six male colleagues and one senior female colleague in the room. And I was pitching a story uh, and my showrunner said, uh, you're, so, you're so fun when you pitch stories. I wonder if you're also fun in bed. Oh. 
And everyone laughed, and some people laughed uncomfortably, and I stood there for a shock moment, and I shook the way young women do when they're cornered by that kind of just awful, awful belittling sexism. And no one spoke up for me. No one said a word, because we don't, because people don't. Now I do. But historically, people don't because you want to get along. You play along to get along. You want to work. You're ambitious. And that applies to men and women you across said, the board. You I said, made a joke. You said at the beginning of, of, of that answer that basically you and so many other women in Hollywood have become inured to this appalling mm -hmm. behavior. Do you really think, and I hope the answer to this is going to be yes, do you think that this is finally changing? Do you think that people like Harvey Weinstein, their cover has been terminally blown and we will never return to these days? Or is this just a hiccup and things will gradually sink back to their sordid, depraved normality? You know, I am an eternal optimist and I am more excited than I've been in a long time because this feels very much to me like a watershed moment. This feels like a tipping point. Very powerful women are speaking out. Very powerful men are speaking out. We need more of the powerful men to join this female chorus. We need more of our male allies. There are a lot of really good men in this town who are looking in the mirror, just like I have this week, and said, where have I been complicit? And where could I have done more? And, uh, and what did I know? And when did I know it? And how can I do better in the future. Mm -hmm. And I am having conversations with some very powerful women and men, all of whom are saying, I'm never, ever going to be complicit ever again.